whole season is holy, Lord, that you would come to dwell with us, Lord. We're so grateful to you, Lord, that you are dwelling with us, that you did not consider us too far gone, Lord, but you wanted to dwell with us. You wanted us to be with you, Lord. Thank you for dying for us, for coming and being a man and going through everything that you did and dying for us so that we could be with you. We could dwell with you, Amen. Father. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to read the Christmas story. That's what we called it. Every Christmas, when I was little, I guess my mom or dad read it. I don't know who read it, but after... She was older, and it seems like Christmas was at our house a lot, and all the family would come. At some point, she'd say, well, let's read the Christmas story. We'd be ready to eat or something. She'd say, well, let's read the Christmas story. I said, okay, we'd read it. So <laughs> I never could read it without crying then, so we'll see what happens today. In those days, Caesar Augustus, you know, you wonder why there was even ever a Rome. Right here. That's the only reason that Rome ever existed. Right there. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Boy, they were, they were conceited, weren't they? <laughs> it wasn't their world. It's God's world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, 
a Savior, has been born to you. He is Christ. He is Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Jesus, Son of God, Son of Man, born of a virgin, led a sinless life, the perfect sacrifice. Tempted just as we are, yet without sin, the perfect qualified sacrifice. He willingly gave himself as a sin offering to pay for our sins. They're paid for. Your sins are paid for. A lot of people don't believe that. Your sins are paid for. Born in a stable, wrapped in swaddling clothes, the King James says, and laid in a manger, a trough, a trough. You think a trough's real dirty. Well, at my house, when we feed the calves, they lick that thing clean. That may be some cow saliva on it, but there's nothing else on it. <laughs> They lick, get every little dust particle left of that feed. It's pretty clean. Hmm. A trough. The creator of the universe lay in a trough, carefully, tearfully, wrapped with cloths, clothes, cloths, sleeping, breathing earthly air with human lungs. Wow. Wow. God who took Adam and formed him out of the dirt, breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, now is breathing that air with human lungs. What a night, what a morning that God has come to us. He came helpless, humble as a child, a babe, an infant. What love. He came in the fragility, in the fragile body of an infant. You know, an infant can't do anything for itself. It breathes. That's about all it does. Poops. Nothing. Trusting us to take care of him. Emmanuel, God with us. Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. I love Christmas because it's filled with wonder and awe. I love everything about Christmas. I love bells ringing. People at the horse show yesterday were riding their horses around. They had bells on their horses. I thought, that's very cool. I like that. Most of that other junk I don't go for too much, but the bells, I thought, hey, that's cool. I love bells. I love Christmas trees. <laughs> much to my wife's chagrin, we've always had a live tree. Why don't we get one of those plastic ones this year? No, I want a real tree. I want to smell it. Of course, then we have part of our family come on Christmas Day, and they're, <coughs> they're allergic to pine trees, of course. We'll just sit outside a minute. It'll be all right. I got some Benadryl. So anyway, I love Christmas. One of my earliest memories, it wasn't Christmas Day. I don't know when it was. Around Christmas, the tree was up. And I'm under a table, like a dining room table. You know, little kids hide under stuff. And I'm looking out through the legs of that table, the chairs, and seeing the Christmas tree. Yeah. I love Christmas. 
But you know, this world has stolen Christmas from us. Tried to. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Let's go back up here to verse 14 in the middle of this story. Glory to God in the highest. What do angels say all the time? Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Throughout all eternity, we're going to join with them and sing glory to God in the highest. We're going to be throwing our crowns at his feet. We're going to have a crown. He's crowned us with glory and honor. That's already been done. We're going to be throwing them at his feet. And on earth, peace to men. Peace to men. Why did, why did he say peace to men? Were we at war with him? Yeah, we were. Adam created, Adam committed high treason. Adam was in rebellion. All of the sons and daughters of Adam, us, were in rebellion. And God says, peace. Let's have peace. Peace to men. Romans 5.1 says he came to bring us peace. <laughs> Doesn't say it exactly that way, but let's get it exactly. Let's see if I can get there before Jim does. No, oh, Troy. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access, access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. What's our part? Faith. God gives you the faith, too. To each man is given the measure of faith. You have faith. You have a believer in your heart. You can believe stuff. You believe the weatherman. How silly is that? I think that's silly to believe in a God I can't see. Well, you believe in the weatherman. You're as nutty as anybody I know. <laughs> Me too. We make plans based on the weather report. Well, we can't go. It's going to rain. Got to pray downtown. Well, it's going to rain. I'm not going. How do you know it's going to rain? Well, Travis said it's going to rain. How dumb are you? <laughs> Stepping on toes, aren't I? <laughs> you got a good believer every one of you is sitting in that chair and I didn't see any one of you look at that chair and test it a little bit kind of push on it kind of make sure it's going to hold your weight for you sit. you just plopped right down into it that's believing you believe in chairs why can't you believe in God <laughs> therefore since we have been justified the verse above that, chapter 4, verse 25, says he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life <laughs> as he had been justified, as we had been justified. Justification was complete on account of our being made righteous. It was paid in full. He was raised to life when it was finished when our justification was complete. Peace. Peace with God. Our part is just to believe it. We were talking about it this morning. God says, I want to have peace with you. I've spread this table for you. Come and eat. Come and eat. The table's full. All we got to do is come and eat. You could stand at the door and say, no, I don't believe it. It's some trick. It's some trick. They're going to take pictures of us. They're going to, they're going to use us for some advertising thing. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't trust it. I'm not going in there. Much of the world is just like that. All you got to do is go in there, pick up a fork, and eat. You don't even have to pick up a fork if you're from Oklahoma. You know, Get in there with your fingers. All you got to do is partake. Believing means 
taking. I believe it and I put it in my mouth. If you're a one-year-old crawling around our living room, everything goes in your mouth. You've got to taste everything. You learn about the world through your mouth. Taste and see. The Lord is good. You just have to partake of it. And then he says, to men, peace to men on whom his favor rests. Favor. You could use the word grace there, and it would be true. Favor literally means delight in, to desire. Our little children we delight in till they get older and then we kind of we delight in them we desire them God delights in you God desires you you say well you don't know what I've done you know it doesn't matter it doesn't matter God loves you. I don't care what you've done. God loves you. On whom his favor rests. Grace. The angel said peace to men and grace to them. His grace is on us. We live in the age of grace, age of the church. Our believing faith is a response to the grace of God. Grace is work. The grace of God is work. He went to a great deal of trouble to have peace with us. He spent the life of his son. He poured out the blood of his son so that he could have peace with us. That's grace. God asked Abraham a long, long, long time ago to sacrifice his son, the son of promise. He had waited 25 years on this son. He said, take him to the mountain and kill him and offer him as a burnt offering. And Abraham didn't question him. He didn't argue with him. He didn't say, that's not good. That's crazy. Why would I do that? God, have you taken some kind of medicine? Are you, are you drunk? No, he didn't say a word. He got up and took his son and was ready to slay him. And the angel stopped his hand and said, don't harm the boy. Now I know you won't withhold anything from me. Abraham looked up and there was a ram, which is an adult lamb, in the bush. He took the lamb and substituted that ram for his son. Jesus is our substitute. Jesus took the death we deserved on the cross. And we go free. And when God had his son on the cross, there was no other ram for Jesus. There was no other lamb to take his place. He is the lamb of God. We sang about it. Slain from the foundation of the world. Why did Jesus come? To die. Was the cross an accident? Was the cross plan B? Was the cross not supposed to happen? No. It's why he came. That's the reason he came. For you and me. To die for you and me. Why a virgin? Why a baby? What did that have to do with anything? Well, he had to have a different bloodline. You and I are a descendant of Adam. You can say, no, I don't believe all that stuff. You're a descendant of a monkey. I've wondered that about some of you. I won't look at anybody. You probably thought it about me. That monkey, yeah. No. <laughs> Evolution is such a silly lie. I mean, you look at it and you, think, you laugh. It makes me laugh every time I look at it. I think, that is so silly. 
How would anybody believe that? Well, you believe the weatherman, you might believe that too. We are silly. We need to get our mind renewed and under control. <laughs> yeah, we had to have a different bloodline. So the baby born, you can read about it over here in Luke 1, the holy, the holy thing in par, inside of you will be called the Son of God. Verse 35, chapter 1. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so that the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Did Mary know? Yeah, the angel, angel told her all about it. Did she believe it yet? Well, I don't know. But she heard it. Might have taken a while to believe it. So his father was God. So he was fully God and fully man, son of God and son of man. He had a new nature. And so because of that new nature, because he wasn't of the line of Adam, he could take our place on the cross. He came from the outside. Why a baby? Why couldn't he just have had that happen and come as a man? Well, the definition of being a man, we talked about this a lot before, I think. You got to be born and you got to die. That's a man. There's other stuff in the middle. But mainly, if you're not born, you're not a man. And if you don't die, you're not a man either. A couple of exceptions, I guess. Elijah and Enoch. You got to die. You can't get out of here alive, we used to say. Got to die of something. So he qualified as a man on both ends. Born a man of a new line. Lived a life like us in every way. Grew up. He's a baby. Had to have diapers changed. They didn't have pampers then. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. Never mind. Some other day. <clears throat> <laughs> He was a toddler, got into everything. A little kid, a teenager, probably had pimples, just like us, and yet without sin. How do you know it? The Bible says so. Hebrews 7, it says that. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says, God made him who knew no sin, who had no sin, there was no sin in him. None. God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us. He took my sin upon him. He became my sin. And took it to the cross. So that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. What did he come for? to die. He came to show us the love of God, that God loved us so much that he was in some sense willing to give up himself for us. And through his sacrifice, showing us the love of God to usher us into his presence, to bring us into the kingdom of God by faith, all we get to do is believe. We can't earn it. We can't buy it. We can't steal it. You can't make yourself good enough. Self-help courses are no benefit at all to you in terms of heaven. There's only one way to heaven. His name is Jesus. You have to submit to him and believe him and receive him as Lord. That's the way. And we need to have the same attitude he did. Philippians 2.5 We read it just the other day. You're going to say, why do you keep talking about the same stuff? Well, when you get it, I'll quit talking about it. <laughs> How's that? 
deal. Verse 5, Philippians 2, 5, your mind, your attitude. Some of y'all came in here with an attitude this morning. Fighting all the way in here with your wife or your kids. <laughs> Brought that attitude right in here. Some of you are depressed about something. Your football team lost or whatever. Coming in with an attitude. Huh? Need to check those attitudes at the door. Amen. Leave them in the car. I do that all the time. Not leaving the car, I bring it right in. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, he was God. You got to get that before you go any further. He was God. In very nature, God. Very means true. In true nature, God. He did not consider equality with God something that he had to hold on to or grasp. He is. He was. He always will be God. I don't have to hold on to it. That's who he is. He emptied himself of deity, made himself of no reputation, made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance a man, he humbled himself. If you want to know about humility, Look to God. God humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, every knee and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. He came to deliver us and set us free. You know, the Magi came. You can read about that in Matthew 1. They brought him gifts. We sang about that. What were the gifts? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What is myrrh for? To smear on a dead body. What is frankincense for? To cut the stench of the dead body until you can get the darn thing buried. What's gold for? Well, if you're a king, you need to have a big funeral. You're going to need some gold for that. The wise men brought him a funeral for a gift to a babe wrapped in cloths. You know, he wore those same sort of cloths in the tomb. They wrapped him in cloths and put him in the tomb. The picture of Christmas is the picture of the cross. And if you can't remember that, you need to remember. And Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, take a minute. And thank God for his mercy and his grace that is never ending. And his love that is ununderstandable. And give him glory. He made us alive with Christ Jesus. So that we can walk with him in his love. Jesus said, this is the new command I give you. Love one another just like I have loved you. In another place he says, here's love that a man lay down his life for his brothers. How do you lay down your life for somebody? You might let him have that last piece of pecan pie at Christmas dinner. That's pretty tough. 
You might let that guy that's cheating you win. You might let him win. You might not take one another to court. You might not slander one another. You might not gossip about one another. Sorry. Doesn't sound very Christmassy, does it? We need to walk in love. We need to stop biting and devouring one another. So what if a guy takes a a foot of your fence line down the side of your house? Is that going to change heaven for you? It's just a foot of grass that you don't have to mow. There's a good side. What if he steals your cattle? Yeah, God bless you. Take them. (laughs) You want some more? (laughs) No, I'm kidding a little bit. But we need to think it through what we're willing to lay down for the king. He didn't bring anything into this life and you're not taking anything out. We're here for a little while. We get to breathe. And with that breath, we get to say yes to Jesus. And, per, and not persist in our refusal. Hell will be full of people that are there because they just said no to Jesus over and over and over again. Because he gives us chance after chance after chance after chance. He never gives up. He never stops wooing you and calling you. He never stops delighting in you and desiring you. You are his child, and he wants you in the kingdom, and all you've got to do is say yes. Believe in him. Submit to him. Give him your life. Heaven's going to be so great. You won't miss that foot of grass. Not for an instant. Father, I thank you for Christmas. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for a mother who led me in a sinner's prayer and that modeled your love in front of me. Jesus, Lord of glory. You've given us all that we need for life and godliness. Help us. Strengthen us. Encourage us. You've already empowered us. You've already filled us with the Holy Spirit. You've already given us all spiritual blessings. You've already empowered us with the power that you raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Help us get off our rear end and do something for the kingdom. But let us listen to you and just do what you say. Let us listen and obey. And let us find the joy. The joy. The overwhelming joy of obedience. Obedience doesn't sound good. We don't like that word. Oh, let us find the joy in obedience, the peace and the hope that comes when we rest in your word and in your truth and in your love. Pray that you bless us as we go. Give us all a great Christmas, a great Christmas season. Help us remember you all through that time more than ever. Draw us near to you. We thank you for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. If you need prayer, we're down here. We'd love to pray with you. Woohoo! Ivan just passed his exam.